because David Bowie is something of a shapeshifter, a man of many identities, enormous musical talents. But when he declaimed at the Brits Music Awards this week by proxy through the model Kate Moss, Scotland stay with us, will he really have any impact on the Scottish independence referendum? Or is the really important intervention that from the European Union and the British Treasury, suggesting that an independent Scotland will have to think again about its currency and EU membership? David Bowie, great musician. I think you're great a fan. Great musician. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. He's you're a fan of uh, Scotland Stay With Us as a Scotsman? Huh? I mean, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's the master of reinvention and he's, he's done it again. It's the most unlikely <laughs> thing to come back uh, reincarnated uh, as a defender of the Union. I think it will make a difference at the margins in that British culture, which has great uh, heft, the nationalists had expected that young voters in particular uh, would be very pro independence. And actually what, uh, what Bowie has done is he's reminded a portion of the Scottish electorate that, and he is a, although he lives in New York, he's a creature of British culture. He's reminded them what London is like and this incredible teeming cultural melting pot. And many, I think many young Scots don't want London after, uh, wouldn't want independence because they don't want London to become a foreign city. They want its opportunities open to them. So it's something that the nationalists didn't, uh, uh, didn't see that didn't see that coming and Bowie's intervention illustrates that where I think the nationalists have had an incredibly difficult couple of weeks is that you have to remember that Alex Salmon's entire strategy and he's been working on this for 25 years was all about establishing an idea of reassurance so that you could vote in Scotland uh, but you would still keep the Queen as head of state you would still use the pound uh, sterling and you would still you'd have a guarantee that the morning after the referendum you'd still be in the European Union. Now, in the last couple of weeks, the, there's been this extraordinary assault by the UK political establishment and the Bank of England to say, no, you can't keep the pound. There isn't going to be a currency union. The English voters are not going to underwrite and uh, potentially subsidise Scottish registered banks. So that make, that's the fir first big difficulty for Salmon. And, and this EU. And the EU. <laughs> the EU is a huge difficulty EU's as well. Mm -hmm. Huge difficulty. I mean, I think... Barroso may have actually slightly overplayed his hand mm -hmm. in that uh, I think it's, it's, it is, Salmond is right, that it's almost impossible longer term to imagine Scotland being entirely excluded from mm -hmm. the EU. But Salmond's position has been that Scotland is a member of the EU, which it isn't, the UK is. And his position has been that the morning after the referendum, as I said, it is still in the EU. Now, rather than having that reassurance, the voters are told that there yeah. are going to be two, three, four, five uh, very difficult years involving complicated negotiations with the EU and potentially with London as well. And but also, you know, you're a former editor of the Scotsman, so you mm. know, you're very much in tune with how public opinion has changed uh, on this. Uh, it, the way that the euro is seen in Scotland is not the way that it was seen a few years ago before yes. the crisis, to put, it, to, put it mildly. to put it mildly. And if Scotland has to apply to get into the EU, even if it gets in, it will have to take the euro. That's, that's the deal. Yes. Salmond is saying that he simply won't do that. Uh, uh, so there's an impasse there. I mean, Salmon, until very recently, until Greece and until the Eurozone um, implosion, uh, Salmon's view was that Scotland needed to get up away from the shackle of the, of, of the Stirling zone and join the Euro as quickly as possible. That became electorally uh, impossible. Um, very, very difficult for him. So he rapidly on the hoof reinvented uh, his entire approach and said, we will keep the pound. Uh, but didn't uh, didn't didn't game this properly and didn't I think didn't calculate that the English particularly English uh, the English political establishment wouldn't just take this line down. And they may have a view on it. I mean, how, 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 how do you how do you see it? you've reported on it and, uh, and so on? How do you think it's seen in across the EU? Um, across the EU, it's not. I mean, most people don't really understand it. To I mean, that first of all. And um, I personally do think it's as irrational and sentimental as the Tories wanting to leave the e European Union. Uh, yet they uh, sort of urge the Scottish people to stay within the UK. Um, no. I, I don't think anybody really understands that in Europe. And Brussels certainly, and Barroso made that very clear, has no interest in, in a further splitting up of this, this entity. But, um, but what's such an interesting paradox for me about this, and far be it for me as an American to, to <laughs> say to anybody that you shouldn't break away from Britain since, of course, we did this more than 20 uh, yeah, years ago. How did that turn out? <laughs> <laughs> Fairly well. Fairly well. That's what I thought. Yeah. But um, 
I think what's interesting to me in some ways is that actually the EU is pay paying the price of its own success in some mm. ways because when you hear about places like Scotland, Catalonia, maybe even parts of uh, Netherlands, or Corsica. Uh, exactly, Corsica, who, yeah. who want to break away from the nations to which they belong now, all of it's under the umbrella of the EU because the EU has, to them, provided this safe place that they can anchor themselves to, that they imagine their independent leaders rubbing shoulders with Angela Merkel in EU meetings, and so it's, it's in part because of the very protection that the EU provides that has encouraged this idea that they could split off and be viable mm -hmm. nations on their own, and now Barroso is trying to go, you know, row back all that and say, well, no, no, well, we can't have you breaking up, because, again, in the architecture of the EU, they never really thought what would happen yeah. Uh, but that was a this you know, that, you're absolutely right. That that was a that was a deliberate move made by the uh, Brus Brussels establishment, um, and that's been apparent for the last twenty years. The idea that if you encouraged a loosening of national bonds and you uh, you encouraged devolution and potentially independence, you then weaken the nation state. And uh, if you're then dealing with a nation state like the UK which is broadly skeptical outside the EU, problematic in all sorts of European negotiations. It's, it was, it looked quite tempting 10, 15 years ago to try and uh, give money to Scotland in terms of the regional growth funds and encourage uh, the idea that, that Scotland uh, should stand on its own two feet. And you're absolutely right. Now it comes back uh, to, to bite, bite the EU and it's very, very threatening. Mm -hmm. from, from the outsider, um, it's... Um, it, it seems a little bit naive as far as Alex Salmon's um, politics are concerned for, because I think that the, the fact that he didn't appreciate that the whole British establishment, you know, Bank of England, in EU, um, governing Conservative Party, actually all the parties in, in Britain will go, uh, will unleash all this kind of, you know, big political blows onto him, you know, deal with this, how are you going to deal with this, how are you going to deal with this? It seems a little bit naive as, um, for him as a politician not to have count, um, not to have um, uh, found the answer to foresee that but initially. He, but uh, he, um, I mean, as, as you well know, he's a, a brilliant po political tactician. He's mm. excellent at uh, political jiu-jitsu. And what he's done is taken all of that and said, well, this is bullying and bluster mm. from the British yeah. establishment. And you know what, David Cameron coming to Aberdeen with his cabinet, well, uh, that is that, is that going to help? Mm. You know, th 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 this week yes. coming. In other words, it's a very difficult thing for Cameron to do. Um, and perhaps the best he can hope for is a revival of Labour in Scotland, paradoxically, yes. who are the one group who can really argue effectively for the union well, with, with association yes. with the difficulty the difficulty is for the unionists is that this it, this vote all comes down to west central scotland and particularly male left of center voters who 20 or 30 years ago you could have you, you just weighed the vote and it was labor and it was unionist and that vote is now potentially up for grabs so uh, in those circumstances tories going to scotland particularly public school educated <laughs> Tories like David Cameron and George Osborne is a high risk political strategy because they, their party in Scotland has very few votes uh, and they have very little political leverage. What Salmond now uh, is banking on is that this British establishment intervention will produce Braveheart style, uh, a howl of yeah. rage and just anger that people who might not be entirely convinced by the idea of independence just think, well, I'm not sure about it, but I certainly don't like being lectured by but George Osborne and David Cameron. This is only the start, right? So it's just, just the first indication of how difficult it will continue to be until the, the referendum vote in September. Seven, right? yeah, we've got seven so months or so. Well, exactly. So I'm yeah. thinking if, if uh, seven months before the vote, the British celebration already are using Barroso, and maybe he was right, maybe he was wrong about uh, Scotland's future in the EU. But irrespective of that, uh, this will continue to be. And I, I, I thought, again, again, from someone who is, uh, only visited Scotland on a number of occasions, and um, uh, the closest uh, link we have with Scotland is, I think, Lermontov, who is uh, the Russian uh, poet. And, uh, his, uh, <laughs> I, I thought, I thought Russians like Robert Burns. Uh, <laughs> true, Robbie true. Burns no, absolutely. Uh, yeah. 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 That, that Burns Knights, um, <laughs> Burns I, I took part in Burns, uh, yeah. right? absolutely, yeah, that, that's true. But again, one of those things, it's, it's very interesting because I, I, um, it would be really interesting to see what people in Catalonia think about it, what people in uh, Corsica think about it, moving, just yes. sort of thinking a longer view well, for the... That's threat yeah. as well, no? Spain, I mean, that, that Barroso made that up a bit. I mean, Spain hasn't yet said anything to that. I mean, it might rather be London if London is still in the EU who could vote against that. But let's, <laughs> but, but let's, but let's take a very, uh, a very black and white example. Not Catalonia because of the mm. uh, separatist movement there. What about just when the country wants to just disintegrate? Wallonia and Flandria, for example. 
you know, Belgium is part of the EU, would they really, really go against Belgium government saying, no, you know, go and negotiate with us again for the next 10 years? Yes, and or and you're no longer a member if you are just uh, no, it's, or it's, it's And it's really, it's, it's really hard to explain to people how on earth Scotland, being part of the EU, can no, uh, cannot become but an independent part but of the EU. But just to touch on this, uh, uh, the difficult road that David Cameron's got, you know, he is the Prime Minister of the United yep. Kingdom and he could be the last Prime Minister of the United Kingdom <laughs> right. if there's a yes vote. Right. Uh, but he is also, as Nicola Sturgeon, the Deputy First Minister of Scotland said, she said, quote, li the living embodiment, basically, of why okay. you should vote yes. Right. She is onto something there. Whatever people in the rest of the country think, that does play to exactly the kind of voters that, that Ian's talking about. And I think you're right that they're going to have to rely on non-Tory, non-public school educated, although plenty of Labour politicians are public school educated politicians, to try to make the case. But I think we ha already saw a taste that they, of what they feel they need to do in terms of good cop, bad cop. I mean, you had David Cameron love bombing, as they said, <laughs> Scotland, just a, you know, a week before then George Osborne took the gloves off and said, now I'm gonna play a little bit of hardball. Mm. And I think probably they're not necessarily off the mark in that there needs to be the hard sell and the soft sell. I mean, the, the, for those who might be wavering, um, the soft sell might appeal to their sentimental side, for some of those who might be wavering, they need to know just the yeah, kind of the hard facts. You might have a point about the cultural leaders, but to go back to David Bowie mm. again, I mean, just to say, you know, it's not, it's not a rational argument, it's just Scotland stay with us, ha has got a certain degree of power. <laughs> it might, you yeah. might think oh, entertainers forget what they, what they say, but there, there, it does have a kind of oh. sense of affection. It did, uh, yeah. It was, it, I, I think it was, it was worth, as someone who doesn't want the United Kingdom to, to break up, I think it was worth a thousand interventions by politicians. I think it was a very interesting, very important uh, moment. And Salmond, in comparison, now risk, risk looking rather kind of mean-minded and um, ridiculous, really. I mean, he, he, his response uh, the other morning when he gave his speech was to say, uh, you say we can't use the pound. Yes, we can, trying to invoke Barack Obama. <laughs> I mean, th unfortunately, he was doing this in a hotel function suite in Aberdeen in front of 200 people rather than 150,000 people in a, in a stadium in the US. So the effect was, the effect was slightly ruined. But, I mean, and also there are those who would say, yes, we can, was a great slogan. It's not quite worked out or so well for Barack <laughs> Obama either. But also what the UK political establishment is saying politely on behalf of uh, English and Welsh uh, and uh, Northern Ireland voters and the polls show that they're, they're backed in this, they say, well, yes, you can but you should be aware, aware before you do this that there are very serious consequences. But, yeah, and it's, you make an interesting point though about non-political public figures and mm. how, at least from my viewing, they've been relatively absent so far in this campaign. And I would have thought that by now, for example, the yes right. side would have said, yeah, the true, let's get Andy Murray out there talking about the, the importance of Scottish independence and perhaps on the no side, get J.K. Rowling to write Harry Potter and the importance of the United Kingdom, you know, <laughs> and, and, and get these figures to exert their influence. And yet that hasn't happened, which I find very curious. But it may, it's not because any of these figures aren't interested or don't care. It's because many of them, I've talked to a few of, uh, people who don't, don't want to step, into, say, this. step <laughs> into it just yet, but yeah. we'll have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Thanks very much. Thank you. That's it for